Today, we're going to talk about facilitation within a community of inquiry. We're going to start off with a bit of a review of what a community of inquiry is. I'm sure uh, being Mallet students that this idea, this framework is not new to you. Uh, It's one of the more established frameworks for developing online learning. Uh, The Community of Inquiry model uh, emerged in 2000 from Anderson, Garrison, and Archer, even though the roots of it actually go back to the progressive education movement and people like John Dewey, who came up with uh, the original idea around and the original concept of a community of inquiry. Anderson, Garrison, and Archer took that idea and, and adapted it for this new modality, online learning, that was emerging Uh, around 2000, and came up with this definition of an educational community of inquiry for online learning. They talked about a community of inquiry as being a group of individuals who collaboratively engage in purposeful, critical discourse and reflection to construct personal meaning and confirm mutual understanding. Um, So this model talks a lot about a group of people who come together, have a discussion, reflect on those discussions, and then come up with some kind of new understanding or new meaning uh, based on the critical discourse and the reflection that happens. When you have that, that's what you're trying to achieve within a community of inquiry. Bring a group of people together, have some good discussions, think about those discussions, and hopefully that results in some learning. So this purple piece really talks about the role of a facilitator within a community of inquiry, engaging in purposeful critical discourse. When you bring a, uh, bring a group of people together, um, you often have that one person who is... Uh, kind of poking, kind of prodding, kind of setting the framework for that critical discourse to emerge from the community through the discussions of the community. And that is the role of a facilitator within a community of inquiry. Within a community of inquiry, in order to develop a community of inquiry, you have to develop these three presences. Anderson, Garrison, and Archer talk about social presence, cognitive presence, and teaching presence. Social presence really talks about the ability for people to present themselves as real, to be available within the community in order to have those kinds of discussions and share their reflections and their meanings with other people. There's a really important social component in online learning um, when you're working in the community of inquiry model which, you know, is quite different than some of the early distance education models that were often correspondence-based, and it was often one person, you know, sending in their their uh, their, their tests and, and getting their reading materials, maybe interacting with uh, an instructor through the mail in those early distance education models. So the community of inquiry had took a kind of a radical approach when the internet came around and said, we have the internet, we have these new technologies that allow us to have communication and, and discussion forums and to, to facilitate discourse. Um, so in order to do that, though, we need to have uh, people being people within the community. So social presence really talks to that piece. Cognitive presence talks to uh, the, the processes around developing that shared understanding or those personal meanings. How do you recognize, for example, that learning is happening within a community of inquiry? That's what cognitive presence really speaks to. Teaching presence is a little bit more about the administrative side of of the course and and the structure of the course and putting that together and the importance of having that, developing good activities in order for those discussions and uh, critical discourse to happen. Uh, And it's one of the areas within the community of inquiry that facilitation is specifically mentioned. Although in order uh, to have a good community of inquiry, facilitation does play a role in the development of cognitive presence, social presence, as well as teaching presence. But within the community of inquiry and the formal definitions of each of these uh, different presences, that's where facilitation is mentioned. And we're going to dive down into teaching presence in just a moment here to to dig into facilitation. Uh, But the community of inquiry says that when you have all three of these presences, teaching presence, cognitive presence, social presence, you have a good online educational experience and you've developed a community of inquiry when you have teaching presence, social presence, and cognitive presence. 
So the co uh, community of inquiry is a theoretical model. Uh, and so work has been done to kind of flesh this out a bit and to, to, to expand on these different presences and say, let's start breaking these presences down and, and finding ways that we can recognize or, or find indicators that these presences are actually happening within the community of inquiry. Uh, so, so work from 2007 from Garrison and Arbaugh started categorizing uh, different aspects of the elements of the community of inquiry. What goes into social presence, open communication, group cohesion, effective expression, all of those things are categories within uh, social presence within the community of inquiry. So uh, you want to be able to design activities that allow for that or to find indicators or evidence of in the learning community that these things are happening. And so within teaching presence, we can start to see where facilitation fits in explicitly around this idea of facilitating discourse as one of the categories within teaching presence. Uh, so being able to create those opportunities for students to share personal meaning around the topic that's being discussed within the community of inquiry. That would be an indicator if you see a student that is starting to share their personal meaning or, or making connections uh, around uh, different readings and saying, hey, I'm putting this together with this and I'm coming up with this. Uh, that's a good indicator um, that the facilitator is doing a good job, teaching presence is being established, and also a good indicator that cognitive presence is being established. When you start seeing participants in the community of inquiry sharing personal meanings and understanding, that's a good indicator that you've also got some cognitive presence uh, within the community of inquiry. So then to build on this, uh, some more work was done. This is a fairly recent uh, paper from 2019 that took those teaching presence categories of design organization, direct instruction, and facilitating discourse and actually broke those down into subcategories. So now we're starting to see things that you can incorporate in the design of your, uh, say, week-long learning experience that will uh, provide indicators that uh, you're facilitating or what you should do or what you should focus on as a facilitator for those, uh, for that week of, of facilitation that you're, you're, um, you're going to be designing. So down here at the bottom, we see uh, five bullet points that talk about um, sort of key things that uh, happen that facilitators, the key roles that facilitators might have in uh, establishing uh, teaching presence and a facilitator presence within the community of inquiry. So facilitators, for example, are often called upon to, uh, to help uh, the learners within the community identify the areas where they agree and disagree. So often you, within a, a learning community, you may have areas of disagreement and agreement. And, you know, sometimes we all have to agree to disagree, but the facilitator is the one who kind of makes that call and says, hey, this is areas where I think we agree. This is where we disagree. And, you know, maybe that's, that's where the learning is, is that sometimes we agree and sometimes we disagree. So um, the facilitator is really charged with kind of fleshing out those areas of agreement or disagreement within the community. Helping uh, the learners within the community of inquiry reach consensus and reach understanding. Uh, the facilitator will also help the learners uh, through encouragement, uh, by acknowledging their contributions, reinforcing their contributions. This really helps with social presence as well and the facilitator's social presence. If you can acknowledge the contributions of the learners within the community, um, that can help learners feel heard and feel seen within the community, feel like they have a social presence within the community. Um, the facilitators are often the ones who set the climate for learning. So at the beginning of the course may come up with some shared expectations or understanding of how we're going to behave in this uh, online learning community, how we're going to learn together, uh, setting out some rules and guidelines um, for, and then, and then helping to enforce those rules and guidelines uh, within the community of inquiry. And the last point here, drawing in participants and prompting discussion is a key role for a facilitator within a community of inquiry. Really being able to promote and come up with ways to encourage that critical discourse to happen within the community is a key role for a facilitator within a community of inquiry. So there are some, uh, some of the ways that uh, facilitation fits within the community of inquiry. 
and uh, some of the ways that as you are developing your capstone project for this course, which is the facilitation week, uh, some of the things that you can keep in mind, come back to this chart specifically around facilitating discourse as you're designing with your teams around uh, your, your activities around your facilitation week. And look at each of these bullet points and go, um, how are we setting the climate for learning within this facilitation week? What are we doing to draw in participants and to promote discussion amongst the participants? Um, if we do have areas of agreement and disagreement, how are we going to how are we going to mediate that and how are we going to identify that and how are we going to summarize that? And most importantly, how are you going to encourage, acknowledge, and reinforce student contributions within the community of inquiry? It's such a key piece to keeping learners engaged in online environments. The encouragement, acknowledgement, reinforcement of their own contributions can go a long way to building engagement within uh, community of inquiry and within other online learning models as well.